Hi, my name is Gavin Minter, and this is the final episode of the Daily Music Tips brought to you by the Cape Town Music Academy. Um, today it doesn't really have a title. I'm just going to close off this week as we've discussed various topics this week. And, and this one is really just going to be about the music. And, you know, we've been gifted with this incredible thing called music, which is bigger than all of us. It has the ability to imp impact people's lives and touch hearts on such a deep level. You know, music is this profound emotive force that people resonate with, and it literally has provided us a sound, provided a soundtrack to our lives. It needs to be cherished, nurtured, supported, and loved. And with a basic shout out to the people in the music industry um, for all the support and all the years for, for all the artists and, and music in general. And to, you know, to the listeners, thank you for subscribing to the artist's journeys. You know, f without fans and listeners, we would still create, but we could not survive without the livelihood of people paying to see music and etc. And if you would like to continue helping people's journeys, you know, they have the thing called Patreon, which is something you can subscribe to. You can literally become a, a patron to, to certain artists that you that you resonate with and pay a small amount per month. And, and you know, with a whole lot of people that giving this this money every month, they can garner some sort of uh, salary every month that they can carry on working. Um, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people doing these online streams. If you see a little basket code or uh, a tip jog link or some sort of donation link, you know, go to that link and give what you can. You know, just whatever it is. You know, if every if four or five people give 50 rand each after watching somebody's live stream, then at least that artist can go and buy a packet of Enchies on the, on the black market. So, you know, just give what you can. And this is, this is mainly for the non-commercial artists because it, 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 they are so at the end of the line when it comes to being taken care of. You know, the big headliners and the big pop artists and the big commercial artists are sort of taken care of by the industry to some degree. You know, we live in such a different world that so much non-commercial music is lost and not supported and never heard. You know, we live in this real pop idol type society that mass produces these one-hit wonders and... And nobody invests in people's stories as they should anymore. You know, I, I personally think, I personally think that if um, Joni Mitchell or, or, or Bob Dylan had to come around now, I think they would go unnoticed. I don't think the world is w would be able to accept that kind of artist in, in in today's understanding. You know, we have, as I said, we have these shows that. These TV shows that pump out artists every year into the industry, uh, the record company will grab them, they'll go and record a couple of average singles, put, put it out into the industry. The, record, uh, the, the radio stations will jump at it because they think that's what people need to hear and they'll support them. And then the agents will jump on them and they'll throw all these artists at the corporates and, and all the corporate companies will want the new flavor of the, of the, of the, of the month who won the whatever season so-and-so of some TV show and, and they will they'll support the artists and they'll get booked for these big corporates and then after a year they'll, they won't be the flavor anymore and they'll be thrown out and then the new batch will come in the next year and I've met many of these artists I've worked with them and I've booked them you know they were so-and-so season winner and and none of them really have real stories to tell they they went from zero to superstar pop star stardom in a couple of months you know they, they don't understand the journey they don't they've never carried a pa system or jumped in a car and driven 1600 k's to go and play a gig in johannesburg from cape town they have no real stories to tell so they they just end up being these 
cookie box cutter, whatever the term is, cookie cutter <laughs> artist, and that I just churned into the industry. So, and I'm not saying that no non-commercial music is the best. I'm just saying that because I actually love pop music. Don't get me wrong. I just think that a lot of the non-commercial artists need a little bit more help in surviving in this industry. So buy their records, don't stream them, buy them. When the venues open again, go watch live music and support these live music venues before they close their doors for good because I have been on the other side. Live music venues by default become patrons of the arts, but we need to support them. We need to go in there, buy their drinks, buy some food from their shop, you know, support these people. And I feel the same with musicians. You know, it's certainly time for Ubuntu amongst musicians because, and Ubuntu is I am because we are. We need to support each other. We need to advertise each other's gigs. We need to go to each other's gigs, pay our door money and support fellow artists. You know, especially your idols. Go and watch them now while you're young because... Soon tables will turn and you'll be hoping that somebody comes to watch your gig. So go and support the people that you aspire to and are inspired by. Go support them now. You know, I think we have to... We have to support each other at this time more so than ever. And as, as I've said, music is this beautiful thing that we've been bestowed, that's bestowed upon us and we need to look after it. And I'm going to finish by another quote. I think I've quoted a few times in the last week by one of my favorite poets, Shelley. And he's describing something to do with the earth, but it, it fits for music. Anyway, his quote is, I love waste and open landscapes where we taste the pleasure of believing what we see is as boundless as we wish our souls to be. And if you've ever sat on a mountain looking out over the horizon and thought, Geez, we know it's beautiful, but why do we feel this thing? Why, do, why is it something of beauty to us? I've, I remember sitting in Kruger National Park on this high plateau looking out and I'd never seen horizon in such a far distance over this, over this open landscape. And I had that same feeling. And you get that feeling looking over the sea towards the horizon. And, it's, and he puts it into words. He says, we taste the pleasure of believing what we see. So we're looking at this vast thing is as boundless as we wish our souls to be. And I think music does the same for us. I think music connects us to our boundless souls. Thank you for listening. And love the music. My show.